<laughs> Once again, the thrilling adventures of the shadow, the hard and relentless fight of one man against the forces of evil. These dramatizations are designed to demonstrate forcibly to old and young alike that crime does not pay. The shadow in a moment. The first motorist, look out when it's dark out. National Safety Council records show that dusk to dawn hours have only one-third of the traffic, but two-thirds of the fatal accidents. So heed such nighttime precautions as these. Lower your headlight beam when meeting another vehicle, whether or not the other driver dims his light. It's safer for you if one driver can see, even if it's the other guy. Drive at such a speed that you'll be able to stop within the distance your headlight beam reaches. Don't be in the dark about safety. In the dead of light, be alive, be bright. Help cut night traffic accidents down. And now, to the shadow. The shadow, who aids the forces of law and order, is in reality Lamont Cranston, wealthy young man about town. Years ago in the Orient, Cranston learned a strange and mysterious secret. The hypnotic power to cloud men's minds so they cannot see him. Cranston's friend and companion, the lovely Margot Lane, is the only person who knows to whom the voice of the invisible shadow belongs. Today's drama, A Mask for Murder. The dignified man in the blue pinstripe suit stops before the door at the end of the dim-lit hallway. He stands there for a moment, looking around him nervously. Then he knocks. The door opens, and the man peers into a dead, dark room. Then suddenly, from the black recess of the room, a beam of white light stabs blindingly into his face. You're late, Gardner. I... I couldn't make up my mind. I wasn't quite sure if I should go through with it. You're sure now? Yes. Come in. Close the door. That light in my face. I can't see you. That's the idea, Gardner. I see you. You don't see me. That's the way I run my business. Price is 500. Yes. So you said on the phone. First, I'd like to know something, Diano. About what? How you go about it. How you operate. I use a 38. One shot. If you miss? I don't. I follow them wherever they go. I don't let up. When I got them where I want them, then I don't miss. What if they should ask you for mercy? They don't know what's coming. They don't even know what I look like any more than you do, Gun. I see. Who do you want to get? Where and when do I pick them up? You may begin tomorrow night. He leaves his office every evening on the dot of six. It's in the exchange building. Exchange building. Tomorrow. Six. How am I going to spot it? What does he look like? Like me. Oh? Uh-huh. You're looking at him right now, Diano. What? Is this a gag or something? No, Diano. It's no gag. I want to die. I'm hiring you to kill me. <laughs> before you start getting any wrong ideas. Wrong ideas? Really? If you'll only let me explain. I'm sure I can make you understand. There's nothing to explain. It's all quite simple. Margaret, you know what. What? You're jealous. Jealous? Me? Believe it or not, I was sitting in the car minding my own business and just a few seconds before you came up, this uh, 
this young woman got into the car. Mr. Cranston drove off just as I arrived at his house. I followed him here. Now, this Mrs. Garner, Margot, she's in considerable trouble. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm afraid it's very serious. Serious? Yes. You can tell us all about it on the way over to your home. Your um, husband's at your apartment now, isn't he? Yes. Oh, I'm so worried. I had no idea that Frank was in such business difficulties. And the difficulties have something to do with his life being in danger, Mrs. Garner? He felt that he couldn't face public embarrassment. So he hired a professional gunman named Diano to kill him. He paid to have himself murdered? Yes. He, he just told me about it this afternoon. Now he sees how wrong it was. Now he wants to live. That's why I've come to you, Mr. Cranston. Oh, please, we'll have to hurry. It's long past six. Every second counts. But, Miss Garner... Mr. Cranston, before it's too late, Diana was hired to kill Frank any time after six o'clock tonight. Frank's nowhere in the apartment. You said he'd be waiting here for us. He's dead. Frank's dead. Now, Mrs. Garner, you mustn't think anything like that. He, he wouldn't know him any more than a passerby. Come on. What? Behind you on the terrace, a man. Well, then where you are. Frank. Oh, Frank, darling, you're all right. Oh. Vera, who are these people? You can put the gun away, Frank. This is Miss Lane, and this is Mr. Cranston. Oh, Cranston, thank heavens you might show your gratitude, Mr. Gardner, in a more concrete form huh? by putting that automatic away, as your wife suggested. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. Yes, the gun, of course. Frank, what happened? Where have you been? In the streets. I don't know for how long. It seemed like hours. Why didn't you wait here? Diano came here. Oh. I saw his shadow move out on the terrace. I was almost out of my mind. I ran through the streets. I couldn't see him, but I could hear his footsteps behind me. I didn't know what to do, where to go. I ran down side streets and threw back alleys. I finally shook him off. But he'll find me again. I know he will. Oh, Frank. There was only one sure place for Mr. Garner to hide until Deanna's captured. I think I have just the spot we need for Mr. Garner. He won't be able to get to me, Mr. Cranston, eh? That's right, Mr. Garner. Well, look here. Face your own life in danger. It wasn't very brave and it wasn't very wise of you. Your wife asked me to help you and that's just what I'm doing. I'm sorry, Cranston. Right. Stay in jail until I notify you. Mrs. Garner, be down to... Right, Mr. Cranston. And thank you again. Hello? Mr. Cranston, this is Mrs. Garner. Oh, yes, Mrs. Garner. May I speak to Frank, please? What? Isn't he there? Here, of course not. Your husband's in jail, you know that. I had him put there last night. Then it's happened. Diano! What are you talking about? I'm at the jail now. I came to visit Frank this morning, and he's not here. Sat? They said he was bailed out. Less than an hour ago. Now, this is the office, Margot. William Seeley. Bail furnished at reasonable rate. Seeley, he's the one. Come on. Good afternoon, folks. Are you Mr. Seeley? That's who I am, mister. Willie Seeley. What can I do for you? I think you can help us. We're interested in a bail bond. Then you come to the right place, folks. Just like it says in the door, bail furnished at reasonable rates. Honest Willie Seeley. I'm known as in the trade. Yep, honest and the mouth closed tight in the miser's fist. Everything done here on a confidential basis. Uh, here, sit down, folks. A uh, lady can sit in the rocks. Nice comfortable. We won't bother sitting, thank you. Okay, mister. Okay. Fair service you want, huh? Get it done, get out. That it? Okay, how much bond for? Five hundred dollars. Five hundred. Okay, we'll fix up the papers. Uh, who you want sprung? A man named Frank Garner. Who'd you say? Frank Garner. Garner. I sprung a guy named Frank Garner this morning. I know you did, Seeley. That's why we're here. I want to know who supplied the money for that bond. Look, mister, this ain't no information bureau. Like I said, I run my business on a confidential basis. Now, you two, go on. Be the blow. After I get what I came for. Hey, let go, will you? Let go. I don't want to hurt you, Seeley. That's enough to make you talk. I run a legitimate business like I told you. Honest, Willie Seeley. Who put up the money for that bond, Seeley? I can't tell you, mister. Honest, I, I, I promise. Now, perhaps a police can find to make you break that promise. The cops? Take your choice, Seeley. Me or the police. Okay, mister, okay. I got it right here in my book. Uh, in the... 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. Here it is. Uh, the address the guy uh, gave me was uh, 321 Elm Street. Maybe Frank Garner's at that address now. We'll soon find out, Margot. All right, Celine, now. The name of the man who put up the bail money. Uh, sure, sure. Uh, it's right here in the book where he signed it. Uh, yeah. Lamont Clance. That's what the guy signed. Yes, what is... Hello. Who are you? You don't know the face. The voice. You remember the voice, don't you, Gardner? Diana! That's right. Diana. How, how did you get here? I told you, Gardner, I get around. Diana, wait, please. Put that gun away. You're a tough guy to keep up. Diana, listen to me. It's It's not supposed to be like this. It's all a mistake. In my business, no mistake. I don't want to die. I, I changed my mind. A deal's a deal. That's the way I run my business. You don't understand. I can explain. Diana, please. Please, for heaven's sake, don't. <laughs> I told you I was going to use only one shotgun. But I gave you a special bargain. I gave you your money's worth. Between now and Election Day, give a lot of thought to the men you are going to vote for. Too many of us take for granted our right to vote. Either we don't vote at all, or maybe we vote without giving much thought to the men we put in power. And it's wrong. It's all wrong. For we should be concerned as to whether we end up naked or clothed, fed or starved, deceived or trusted, protected or destroyed. Remember, our right to vote is one of our American freedoms. It's up to you and to me, to all of us, to guard it carefully. For freedom is everybody's job. So be sure to vote. And think well about the issues you're voting on. Now to the shadow. When Frank Garner, who had hired a gunman to take his life, was mysteriously bailed out of jail, Lamont and Margot began a search for him. The search ended with the discovery of Garner's bullet-riddled body. Now we find Lamont and Margot with Mrs. Garner in the bleak identification room of the city morgue. All right, Margaret, bring Mrs. Garner over here. Please, Miss Payne. I can't. I just can't go through it. I know how you feel, Mrs. Garner. It isn't easy. But it's necessary. You'll have to identify the body. It'll just take a moment. Come along. All right. Question, Mrs. Garner, for the police record. Do you positively identify this body as that of your husband, Frank Garner? Yes. Frank. That'll be all, Mrs. Garner. Margot will take you to the car. Thank you. I'm all right. I'd rather go alone. The poor woman. Must have been terrible for to see her husband like that. Come on, please. Let's get out of here. Uh, just a moment, Margaret. What? What are you doing? Something here on Garner's left hand that interests me. Interests you? Oh, Lamont, don't. I'm afraid I have to, darling. What's that? All right, Margot, come on. Did you find something back there? Maybe a clue, Margot. I can't say yet. I still don't understand why your name was put down as the one who gave Celia the money to release Garner. It's an obvious attempt to sidetrack me. Deanna must have known you were helping Garner. Perhaps. I have an idea that bail bondsman is the answer to a few questions I have in mind. But what if he won't talk? He may keep something from me, Margot, but 
I'm sure the shadow can find a way of getting the truth out of him. Hello. Hello, this is Willie Shealy. Hey, what about that plane ticket? Okay, okay, good. Uh, Nine o'clock, huh? Okay, I'll come right down to pick it up. Hey, the lights. Who turned them off? Who's in here? <laughs> Who's that? Who is it? Going someplace, Silly? <laughs> Who's laughing? Who is it? Who's laughing at me? Turn on the light, Silly. See who's laughing at you. Oh, yeah. Oh, too bad. You're over anxious, Silly. You stumbled over that chair. Uh, who's playing a trick on me? Come on, come on. Why don't you tell me who it is? The light switch, Silly. Then you'll know who it is. <laughs> oh, the switch, all right. There. There ain't nobody here but me. I hear things ain't there. I better take a drink before. Before you leave? What? what? You're not going anyplace, Seeley. There is somebody here in my room. Yes, Seeley, there is somebody. But I, I don't see. I don't see nobody. No one sees the shadow. <laughs> shadow? <laughs> what? What do you want with me? What would you come here for? The truth. Truth? Truth about what? Who gave you the money to bail out Frank Garner this morning? Bail out Garner? Well, Cranston. The guy, guy called himself Lamar Cranston. The truth, Seeley. I told you I want the truth. Oh, okay, okay. Uh, this guy just told me to put that name in a book. He said if I told anybody, he'd knock me off. He's a crazy kind of a guy. His room was dark and he kept the light in my face. And his name was Diano? Yeah, yeah, Diano. That's right. He, he, he gave me the money for the bond and he told me to beat it. I didn't know he was planning to knock off that corner guy on us. Why are you running away, Seeley? Well, Diano. Maybe he thinks I know too much. Maybe he thinks I should get bumped off, too. You're not leaving town, Seeley. You're staying right here. But Diano... If you try to leave, you have more to fear from the shadow than Diano, Seeley. <laughs> Huh? Okay, man. Shadow? You come back? Hey, who was it? Who's there? Oh, I'll find oh, out. Touch that lamp, Seely. Siano. Stay right in bed, Seely. That's where you're going to die. In bed. No. No, please, Diana, please, please. Lie still, Sealy. It won't hurt you, Beth. Oh, Diana, for the love of heaven. It won't hurt at all. The way I do it. Oh, Diana, wait, wait, wait. Oh, no! Oh! Switch on the light, Margot. Got it. Crashed it. What is this? Drop that gun, Diana, or my next shot will be through your head. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Crash it, huh? How'd you get here? Had a hunch, Diana, would pay you a visit, Sealy. Oh, but for me, he's going to knock me off. Yana's business is foreclosed as of now. I'm keeping his bankruptcy a secret just long enough here to make a phone call for me. Phone call? What are you talking about? A business call, Diano. A very important one. <laughs> Is it over? Yeah. I took care of Seeley. All right, Diana. We'll have the money tomorrow. Is that Diana, Vera? Yes, Frank. Seeley's dead. We don't have to worry about him anymore. Everything's all set now. Excellent. Excellent. Come on out here on the terrace, sir. Well, don't you think we ought to be getting packed? No hurry, Vera. Come on out and have a drink with me. All right, Frank. There you are, Vera. Thanks. Now let's drink to us. If it's all the same to you, I, I'd rather not have a drink. Now. Why, darling, we have so much to celebrate. I know, but I'm frightened. I want to get away from here. I want to get away as fast as I can. Frightened? Why, we're on top of the world. After all, the least you can do is drink to the happy success of your very clever husband's very clever plan. Just that I'm so afraid something will go wrong. What could possibly go wrong now? The actor I hired and trained to double for me is dead in my grave. 
He was hammy, but quite good. Particularly in the voice impersonation. But Cranston still might find out. What can Cranston find out? You told me yourself he was taken in all the way. Celie's dead. And now that I'm legally dead, I'll be able to enjoy the $80,000 I uh, borrowed from the company. Yes, I'll be able to enjoy it all alone. Hello? Oh, I forgot to mention it, Vera. I did have a part of my plan I didn't let you in on. Oh. What are you talking about? You, Vera. I don't need you any longer. So what's the matter with you? You served your purpose quite well. Now, wait a minute. I had no intention of sharing the money with you. As a matter of fact, I've been rather tired of you for quite some time. You don't mean it, Frank. <laughs> You're just saying that. You're joking. No. I'm serious. Dead serious. Stay away from me. You're going over that terrace rail behind you to the ground ten stories below. No. You're committing suicide, Vera. Don't come near me. It'll be quite plausible. The grief over your dear departed husband was too much for you to bear. You took your own life. You won't get away with it. They'll find you out. Find me out? <laughs> you forget, my dear Vera, I'm dead. You identified my corpse in the morgue. I... You'll be murdered by oh, a please. dead man, but no one will know about it. No one, Connor. <laughs> There's somebody here. Oh, please, save me. Go ahead, Garner. Push her off. All right. Go ahead, kill her. I'm no one. <laughs> Just the shadow. The shadow. It was all his plan, all of it. I'm innocent. I had nothing She's to... She's a liar. He was going to kill me. I was only trying to frighten her. Just trying to get the truth out of her. Don't listen to him. I'll tell you everything. She's lying. She's lying. Everything. She's lying. Everything. Please, please. 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 I heard everything. You see, I was in your apartment before Diana phoned you a few minutes ago. You? No. Yes, Garner. The shadow knows. Now you'll pay for your crimes with your life. This time, your very own life. <laughs> well, Margot, that ends the guard. Fair now we can spend a pleasant evening devoted solely to Miss Margot Lane. I'll bet. So help me not even a mention of crime or violence, all right? Mm-hmm. Lamont. Yes, dear. Uh, there's just one thing I'd like to know about the case. Ah, uh, I promised you no shop talk. I wouldn't think of going back on my Stop word. acting so darn stuffy and tell me why Mrs. Garner came to you in the first place if she was in on her husband's plot. Well, they wanted the plan to look good. They needed an unofficial witness. But how did you know there were two Frank Garners, the real one and the hired one? Well, I didn't until I examined the left hand of the corpse in the morgue. Oh, yes, I remember that. The color of the skin under the wedding ring on the third finger was the clue. The same color as the rest of the finger. I see. And if the ring had been worn for a number of years, the skin underneath would be of a lighter color. Is that right? Right as a wedding ring. Oh, now, Mr. Cranston, you've hit on my favorite subject. Cars parked just across the street there. It's a nice night for a drive. We're not taking the car, Lamont. Hmm? Taxi! But Margot. I remember the last time you were going to drive me home alone. Three's a crowd, darling. Taxi! Taxi! <laughs> Inside, you. <laughs> okay, you win. Now, where to, folks? Why, um... Around the park, driver. One hundred times. Young men, attention. Here is your opportunity to obtain a four-year college scholarship at one of the leading colleges in the country. Your Navy has recently announced that the third annual competitive examination for its officer college training program has been scheduled for December 11, 1948, and will be open to high school seniors and graduates who are not less than 17 or more than 21 years of age on July 1, 1949. Successful candidates will receive four years of college at the expense of the Navy. And in addition, they will receive retainer pay at the rate of $600 per year. Upon graduation, they may be commissioned as ensigns in the regular Navy or second lieutenants in the Marine Corps and will be required to serve on active duty for a period of two years. Further information and application blanks are now available at all high schools, colleges, and naval recruiting stations. Don't delay. Apply now.
This story is copyrighted by Street and Smith Publications, Incorporated. All names and places are fictitious. Any similarity to persons living or dead is purely coincidental. Listen again next week, same time, same station, when the shadow will again demonstrate that the weed of crime bears bitter fruit. Crime does not pay. The shadow knows. <laughs> Next week, same time, same station, another strange and thrilling adventure in the shadow's daring battle against the forces of evil. Remember, don't hold back this election day. Get out there and vote. Your vote, soberly, thoughtfully cast, really counts. It will help put and help keep the right people in office. You have the freedom to vote. Vote to maintain that freedom. Freedom is everybody's job. The part of Lamont Cranston was played by Brett Morrison, Margot by Grace Matthews. This program came to you from New York. Stay tuned now for Quick as a Flash. This is the Mutual Don Lee Broadcasting System. <laughs>